Jesus didn't meet him outside the synagogue. Jesus entered the synagogue and saw him in the church. Isn't it amazing? How many paralyzed people we have in the church and with their hands and they are in the church and yet they don't know the reason why they are paralyzed and they don't know the reason why their right hand is with them. So we are praying and say, God, give me a job. No job. God, why is my business not excelling? With dead hand. My career is not moving on. With dead hand. Everything that I touch fizzle out. With dead hand. Anything I touch turns into dust. With dead hand. As a result of sin. Somebody shout the weeded hand. hand. Oh, somebody shout the weeded hand. hand. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your service. Is is Holy Ghost service? Is Jesus service? Father, this is your service. Let it not be a man's service. So I ask you to take pray a minute. And I ask you to have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Uh, for the last time, somebody say the we dead hand. We somebody say the we dead hand. We so that is the title of my message this morning. The we dead hand. The we dead hand. The we dead hand. Now, when you look at Jesus' ministry, his earthly uh, ministry. Jesus performed a lot of miracles. There were a lot of signs and wonders. In fact, sometimes this, the Bible says that uh, and Jesus was moved with compassion and healed them all. And so, Jesus moved in the miraculous. Jesus moved in the supernatural. In fact, throughout his ministry, his ministry bedrock was, was miracle signs and wonders miracle signs and wonders and oftentimes jesus doesn't struggle to cast out devils he doesn't struggle to heal the sick he doesn't struggle to make people whole he just make one statement and it is a done deal and oftentimes he will use statements like this. Your faith has made thee whole. Your faith has made thee whole. Your faith has made thee whole. Or if somebody is demonized and possessed, he just command the demons to come out. And instantaneously, the demons just comes out of that particular individual throughout his ministry. For instance, Jesus showed up by the pool of Bethsaida, the man who was lying there and was believing God for healing for 38 years and still had not had his healing. Jesus just showed up whilst the man was lying on the floor there and Jesus said, rise up. Take your bed and walk. And immediately, the man stood up and took his bed and started walking. The blind Bartimaeus was screaming at Jesus to get the attention of Jesus, to draw Jesus to him. Whilst he was screaming and shouting the name of Jesus, and the disciples were asking him to shut up and to keep quiet. The Bible says that the more they asked him to shut up, the more they asked him to keep quiet, the more he screamed, the more he shouted, the more he drew attention to himself. And finally, he got the attention of Jesus Christ. And Jesus walked up to him and Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind Bartimaeus said, I want to see. 
And Jesus said, Behold your sight. See. And immediately he started seeing. There was a man that was blind and dumb. Blind and dumb. That man was brought to Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at the blind man who at the same time is also dumb and rebuked the spirit and the man instantaneously started seeing and started speaking right away. So oftentimes, when somebody is demonized or somebody is possessed, Jesus will cast the demon out. Jesus will ask the demon to come out or the spirit to come out or the spirit to leave that individual alone. Or sometimes Jesus will just look at the person and the spirit will come out. Now, don't forget, when Jesus was at the tomb of the gatherings, the Bible says that there was a man that was sleeping in the tombs. Now, before Jesus could say anything or utter any word, the demons that are in the person started speaking and they started saying, our time has not yet come. Now, that suggests to me that the devil knows his time. <laughs> He is not oblivious about his time. And he is not ignorant about his time. He knows that his time is up. His cup is full. And so he said, our time is not up. Have you come to destroy us before our time? Which means that there is a time appointed for them to be destroyed. There is a time appointed for them to be extinguished and annihilated. There is a time appointed for the judgment and the wrath of God to come upon them and to, for them to be consumed or cast into the bottomless pit. And so they said, have you come to destroy us before our time? And don't forget, all this while, Jesus has not spoken has not spoken but his mere presence shook the powers of darkness his mere presence shook the kingdom of satan his mere presence put a shiver in the spines of the powers of darkness and so they started speaking even before he could speak or say anything and Jesus waited for these spirits to speak. And after they have finished speaking, Jesus said, what is your name? Now, it wasn't the man that is demonized that responded. It was the spirits that were in him that responded. Because the man's name is not legend. It is the spirits that are in him that is legend. And so the man said, my name is legend, which means that I am demonized and possessed with 5,000 spirits. One man. 5,000 spirits. And then immediately, those 5,000 spirits and demons started bargaining and negotiating with Christ. Without Christ saying anything. Said, you can cast us out, but don't cast us to anywhere. Let us enter into the peaks. That is for another day. The reason why it's for another day because it's a whole message. And it tells us that demons are territorial. They didn't want to leave that particular region. They didn't want to leave that particular domain, that particular community, that particular place. They want to stay there. And so Jesus cast out the demon and said, come out of him. And immediately the 5,000 spirits came out and entered into the pigs. And the pigs entered into the sea and they all died. And so this is how Jesus have dealt with demonic spirit. This is how Jesus have healed the sick and the afflicted. But the amazing thing 
about this particular healing and deliverance, it blows my mind. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 2, the verse number 9. Mark chapter 2, the verse number 9. Let me take it from there. He said, whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. I will repeat it again. Whether is it easier? In other words, which one is easier? Is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, which means that this individual was paralyzed, this individual was crippled, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk, which is, is his frequent statement. Arise, take up thy bed and walk. If you look at all the miracles, Jesus oftentimes used those kind of phrases. But in this particular instant, he is talking about forgiveness of sin before saying, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. Give me the verse 10. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy. Next verse. I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. Next verse. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this faction. We never saw it on this faction. In other words, we have never seen it like this before. This one is different, this one is unique. This one is beyond our comprehension. This one we cannot fathom it. This one is beyond anything that we have ever read or ever heard of. But my issue here with this healing is this. All the other miracles, Jesus never said your sins are forgiven. But this particular one, he said your sins are forgiven. He needed to say, your sins are forgiven before saying, rise up and take thy bed and walk. Don't forget, Jesus was walking with the disciples. They saw a blind man and all of a sudden there was a debate that started going on among the disciples. They were saying among themselves that this blindness of this man is as a result of his sin. If not of his sin, then it's of the sin of the parents. That was the argument and the debate that was going on among them. And then suddenly they decided that they were going to ask Jesus to have the final answer. The, the, the reason why this man is blind. And when they asked Jesus, Jesus told them that it is not the sin of the man. And it is not the sin of the parent that has resulted into his blindness. But this happened that the glory of God may be revealed. That tells me that there are certain infirmities. The root cause is sin. I will say that again. Don't worry, I will break it down. That tells me that there are certain infirmities and affliction and diseases and sickness. The root cause of it is sin. Is sin. That is why when the disciples saw the blind man, they started arguing. And their argument is centered on sin. 
This cannot just happen. It happened as a result of sin. And then Jesus looked at the paralytic man and said, your sins has been forgiven. Rise up and walk. In other words, Jesus couldn't say rise up and walk if he hasn't dealt with the sin issue. Because the reason for the paralysis is the sin of the young man. It's the iniquity and the transgression of the young man. And as a result of his sin and iniquity, his sin crippled him and paralyzed him. Hear me very carefully. Sin will cripple you if you don't stay away from sin. Sin will paralyze you if you don't stay away from sin. As a result of his sin, he was crippled. You see, you are here, you are not crippled, you are walking on your two feet. You have mobility. You can go back and forth. But so many of us here, spiritually, we are crippled. We are not physically crippled, but spiritually, we are crippled. Our businesses are crippled. Our progress is crippled. Our families are crippled. Our destiny, our vision, dreams, aspirations, all these things are crippled. Not because of satanic attacks. Not because of demonic attacks. Not because of the influence of the kingdom of darkness, but because of our waywardness 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 because we have not determined in our heart to walk with God in the integrity of his word and to walk in holiness and righteousness and any time you refuse to walk in holiness and righteousness and abide by the word you will be crippled you will be paralyzed the reason why the church in America is paralyzed is because of sin. From the top to the least, living in sin. We have familiarized ourselves with sin and with the world. You see, there is so much sin that have entered into the church and into the body of Christ, especially in this nation, to the extent that we think that to win the lost souls, we have to be like them. We have to be like them. And so, if I have to win somebody who has tattoos in his body, I have to do tattoos. If I have to win somebody who has piercing all over his body or her body, I have to also do piercing to win that person. And so we have brought the world into the church. In fact, right now, our worship and our praise is full of worldly songs. Because we want the world to come to the church. But we want the world to come to the church and come and see and identify with what they are accustomed to. Not to the presence of God. Not to the power of God. And not to have a relationship with Christ. Amen. That is why our churches have become an entertainment center. And there is no miracles. No supernatural. We are not even teaching the word. We are talking about psych psychology. Self-esteem. Motivation. To have dream and vision. And to accomplish your goals. That is what we are talking about. Messages like this doesn't bring transformation. Messages like this doesn't bring salvation. Messages like this doesn't bring us to the place of purity, holiness, and righteousness. It keeps us in the world. That is why we are in the church. But yet, church has not come into us. Does not come into us. 
American church crippled. 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 Dead. The pastors are dead spiritually. The congregation is dead spiritually. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Any church that doesn't pray is not the house of God. It's not. Any church that doesn't give herself to prayer, to warfare, is not the house of God. Because Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Not a house of entertainment. Not a house of playing games. It is not a social gathering. It's not a clique. It's not a club. It is not a community center. It's the house of God. And if it is the house of God, it means that when I enter the buildings and the decorations, should they tell me that is the house of God? What should tell me that is the house of God? Is the atmosphere. The atmosphere. The atmosphere. The atmosphere should tell me that this is the house of God. The presence that I feel should tell me that this is the house of God. Not the sign of the cross. Not because people are screaming hallelujah and praise the Lord. Because that one, the devil can do it. In fact, he could scriptures what distinguishes the house of god from the houses that are in the world is the atmosphere somebody shout atmosphere 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 Atmosphere. that is why the atmosphere in our churches must shift it must shift it must shift if we are going to see the power of god and the presence of god we need a shifting in the atmosphere. Amen, amen. The reason why we are not having it is because of sin. 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 The leaders and the, and the ministers of this nation want to be politically correct. And so even when they get the platform to lift up the name of Jesus, they will not do it because they don't want to be criticized. They don't want anybody to speak ill of them. They want to be in the good books of everybody. That is why the American church is dead. No revival. No power. You know, when I was with the Archbishop, Duncan Williams, he's my spiritual father, those of you that don't know. When I was with him, we traveled somewhere in Ohio, Toledo, Ohio, to preach in a church. And let me tell you, the bishop over there, and it is a big church, large church, over 3,000 people, and they have three services. So, calculate. All is packed. And the bishop told us, That as for him, he doesn't deal with casting out of devils and those things. He doesn't deal with it. He focuses on the teaching. He doesn't deal with it. Then what about what Jesus said? Their signs shall follow them that believe. That in my name they will cast out devils. said he doesn't deal with that. Another prominent minister that when I mentioned, even a child knows who were in his church. Together with the archbishop, we started ministering. There was so much demonic manifestation. So much demonic manifestation. The church is in Dallas. So much demonic manifestation. And because there was thousands of people who were manifesting demonically and we are just three. We couldn't lay hands on everybody. And so the archbishop beckoned to the bishop to help us to lay hands. He said, no, as for this, I don't deal with it. I don't want to mention him. It's on YouTube. Uh, We don't deal, I don't deal with this. It is not, in fact, he put it this way. It is not the norm 
of the house. It's not the norm of the house. That is how the church in America is dead. And it is mainly dead because of sin. A lot of people that are in church that are praying for progress because they feel there is so much satanic and demonic attack. There is so much witchcraft and witchcraft activity and manipulation and divination and enchantment. Listen to me. Majority of them has got nothing to do with any demonic or satanic spirit. It has got to do with your life. Because when you live in sin, you give the enemy the platform to delay the progress. You give the enemy the platform to cripple you and to paralyze you. This young man was crippled and paralyzed. When they brought this young man to Jesus Christ, Jesus looked at him and saw that the root cause of this paralysis is sin. And for it to be dealt with, the sin in his life must be forgiven. To remove the legalities that Satan has to afflict this young man. Listen. The issue and the affliction you have, is it because of sin? The problems and the trouble waters that you find yourself in, is it because of sin? The instability, the unrest that you have in your life and you have in your family, is it because of sin? Because today, we believers, sin is no longer something that we dread. We have familiarized ourselves with sin and iniquity and transgression. And we do it without feeling guilty. We do it without any form of conviction. If we are going to be whole, if we are going to rise again, if we are going to see progress, if we are going to see the hand of God, if we are going to see the blessings of God, if we are going to experience longevity and divine health, if we are going to experience the manifestation of the things that God has said concerning our lives, we must stay clear from sin. We must stay clear from sin. We must stay clear from iniquity. We shouldn't have anything to do with the world. Nothing. Nothing. Jesus on his earthly ministry, he didn't change his hair to have dreadlocks, to win those who has dreadlocks. He just preached to them and they were saved. He didn't become a fisherman to win the fishermen. He didn't become a gigolo to win the woman at the well or Mary Magdalene. He just preached the word. God said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus for it is the power of God unto salvation. There is power in the gospel. And there is power in his name. You don't need to be like them to win them. That is what has taken us into the world. These days when you enter into church. Even the atmosphere. The environment. It looks like you are in discotheque. You are in the club. That is how it looks. Most of our churches right now, if you put our churches in session and then you bring the club side by side, also in session, you will not know which is which. You will not know which is which. You will have no idea 
Which one is church and which one is club? Because they are all the same. All the same. All the same. Paralyzed and crippled. Paralyzed and crippled. Nothing is moving. His destiny was crippled. His family was crippled. His finances was crippled. Everything around him was crippled. His greatness was crippled. You see, when you live in sin, sin reduces you to nothing. The man was supposed to be standing, but because of sin, he was lying down. When you live in sin, when you play with sin, when you sit in sin, when you dwell in sin, when you drink and eat sin, sin will reduce you to nothing. It will devalue you. It will make you a nobody. A nobody. When you live in sin, when you live in an ungodliness and unrighteousness, and you don't live in purity, you don't live in holiness, you don't oblige to the scriptures and walk according to the statutes and the precepts of the word, let me tell you, you will be nothing. You will be trash, garbage, refuse heap, downhill. That is what you will become. That is what you will become. We need holiness in our lives. We need righteousness in our lives. We need purity in our churches. Enough of the garbage. Enough of the world. Enough of the world. Enough of the world. Enough of the ungodliness. Enough of unrighteousness. Our conferences and our seminars, it is not geared for life transformation. It is geared for siphoning monies. Every Sunday is business as usual. Another religious service. We cannot have religious services and it is not business as usual. Every Sunday, there must be different atmosphere depending on the needs. And it got to be an atmosphere of power, an atmosphere of the presence of God, an atmosphere of the glory of God, an atmosphere of heaven. An atmosphere of heaven. We cannot be crippled by sin. We cannot be crippled by the world and the love of the world and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the high. We cannot be crippled by sinful thoughts and sinful desires that we conceive in our hearts. We must have a pure thought and a pure heart. Yes. Those who are pure in heart, those are the people that will see the almighty God. No wonder you are praying for Christ to reveal himself to, to you. And he's not revealing because your heart is not clean and your heart is not pure. It is sin and iniquity and transgression infested. And so he can't reveal himself. He can't reveal himself. He can't reveal himself. We are liars, adulterers, fornicators, rocketeers. We do it quoting scriptures to support it. We do it saying hallelujah. We do people and we shout praise the Lord. Have you ever worked with a fellow, a fellow Christian who you want him or her to come and do something for you? And he tells you that because, you know, we are of the same faith. Because we are of the same faith, you know, I'm not going to charge you much. Right. And, and he, he mentions the figure 
and you think that you have a, a deal because you are of the same faith coming from the same church and then you turn your back and you cross check and you realize that man the guy is a criminal he's duping you he's a liar rocketeer cheats cheat that is what is happening in the body of Christ that's what is happening in the body of Christ a lot of corruption in the church corruption 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 in the church oh God wants to perform a miracle for you can you sow a seed of 3,000? Yeah. <laughs> and so, if every miracle that I have to receive from God, I have to sow a seed, then what kind of God is this? Yeah. What kind of God is this? Yeah. What kind of God is this? I have to buy the miracle. I have to buy the prophecy. I have to buy the direction. Then what kind of God is this one? Yes, yes, yes. And oftentimes times, we are asking people to give what they don't have. Yes, yes. If it is God, God will not ask you of anything that he has all, not already given to you. Amen. When God asks you of anything... It is because it is within your power yes, yes. to do it. Yes. But if it is not within your power, it cannot be God. Yes. Yes. So I see of thousand dollars, you don't even have hundred dollars in your account. <laughs> Which means that Without thousand dollars, my miracle is not going to happen. But that is the corruption that we have in the church. A young man called me and was telling me at a certain time in his life, he was having some issues and called this prophet to pray for him. And the prophet said, before I could even talk to you, you have to sow a seed of $1,000. And he said, I, I didn't have it. I didn't know where to get it even from. And I told him, and he said, if you don't have it, I can't do anything for you. And he said, to his astonishment and Amazement. The man didn't pray for him. Now, you, you are looking at me like you have never heard it before. You are the ones that have turned so many to be false prophets. You, that you are looking at me. You are saying, hey, as if you are not the one who created it. You are the one who created it. Because if you have a relationship with him and you have not been crippled by sin, you can talk to him and hear God for yourself. For yourself. Hear God for yourself. Hear him for yourself. You don't need to go to anybody for any direction or guidance or any prophetic word. If you are a covenanted child and you walk with him in the integrity of the word, if you are a covenanted child and you walk with him in holiness and righteousness, I bet you he will speak to you. He will talk to you. He will reveal things to you. He will unravel things to you. He will uncover things to you. He will show you mystery and he will show you the root cause. Let us go back to serving God in truth and in spirit somebody shout yes, yes. yes. let's go back let's go back 
But the reason why we run after prophets, after apostles, after evangelists, after pastors, after teachers is because we know we are crippled, we are paralyzed. We know that we are sinful. We know that we live in sin, we dwell in sin, we eat in sin, we, we swim in sin. And so we know that when we talk to him, he won't listen to us. And so, and so we take the shortcuts. 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 And so this prophet... Some of them, yes, they are true prophets, but they tend to be false because of pressure from the people, from you. Pressure. And so they always have to have a word. Always. They must have a word. One day somebody came to me, book an appointment, came to me, I sat down. She also sat down. I said, you are welcome to my office. How can I help you? I'm at your service. If you have met me before, these are my usual phrase. How can I help you? And then she opened her mouth. Because she has met another prophet. Oh, I came so that you can tell me the problem and give me the solution. <laughs> said, eh, I'm a soothsayer. I should tell you your problem. Why you booked the appointment and you came to see me. I should tell you the problem and give you a solution. I said, madam, you are in the wrong office. Wrong office. Because nobody, nobody under the sun. Hey, even if you are a heavily being or you come from the sea, or land, you cannot tell me to be a false prophet. It's not possible. Amen. It's not. Amen. It's not. It's not possible. I fear God. Amen. It's not possible. I said, you are in the wrong place, madam. Please, I am a very busy man. I have so many things I got to do, and I will not be able to talk to you. She was shocked. She was out. But you see, there are so many that don't fear God. And so they conjure a word. They create a prophecy. And because you, you have a tingling ear. You want to hear stuff. And so they make you hear stuff. That's why so many have slept with you. Oh yeah. I am seeing it. They slept with you. That was the prophecy. I slept with you. That is how the church has become. Sin infested. Sin infested. No power. No presence. The supernatural is not there at all. Now let me talk to you about the withered hand. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 12. The verse number 9. Now watch this very carefully. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. <laughs> you have not caught it. I will read it again. Go back. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. You see, it's no longer God's synagogue. It is their synagogue. Where there is sin, where there is iniquity, where there is ungodliness, unholiness, unrighteousness, where there is fornication and defilement and, and lack of sanctification and purity, let me tell you, it no longer becomes the house of God. It becomes your house. Because if it were to be the lost synagogue, it will go this way. Project it for me. 
And when he was departed thence, he went into the synagogue. There will be no there. He went into the synagogue. But because they have turned it to become theirs because of the things that they do in the church, in the house of God. In the gathering, in the assembly of God, the church has become theirs and it is no longer the Lord's. He went into their synagogue. Don't forget, it is the same synagogue that they were selling. They were merchandising in the church. If Jesus were to be around in our time, a lot of people would be flogged in the church. A lot. Because we are doing worse than in those days. They were merchandising. They were doing their own stuff. Jesus flogged them. It was the same place. Their synagogue, their church. Watch this. Somebody shout the withered hand. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. Now, if the Bible is yours, I want you to underline behold. Behold. Somebody say behold. behold. Somebody say behold. behold. And they asked him, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him and behold there was a man which had his hand withered listen to me carefully shout behold behold, behold it's not for ordinary people <laughs> it's not for ordinary people ordinary people don't show up and they say behold Behold is an exclamation to acknowledge the presence of notability. That is why you will hear this. Behold his royal majesty. Behold the king. Behold the president. Behold the senator. Behold the congressman. And so behold is an exclamation for notable great people, not for ordinary people. And in Jesus' ministry, there had been a lot of notable people in his ministry. Like the scribes, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees. But never one time was the word behold used. Not once was the word behold used. And so why did the Bible use behold? Not for somebody who was whole, but for somebody who was sick. With dead hand. With dead hand. And the Bible is saying, Behold. Behold the presence of the withered hand. Behold the withered hand is here. In other words, the Bible was drawing attention to the withered hand. Drawing attention of everybody, of the crowd, to the withered hand. It blows my mind. There must be something about this withered hand. There must be something about this man. Behold, the withered hand. And so why did Jesus use behold? And why was this man's hand with it? You know, I didn't want to come here and just talk to you about something somebody has explained somewhere in a book. No, I didn't want to do that and give you the description of the withered hand. I asked Jesus to show me the withered man that he healed. 
I asked him to show me. I wanted to see him and to see his withered hand. How it is. And the Lord showed me the man and showed me his withered hand. You see, this is how the hand was. What the Lord showed me. The hand, a lot of flesh has diminished from the hand. And it has this white, 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 white spot all over the hand. And the hand also looks like, you know, wounds that are healed. And so it looks like scars. Scars all over the hand. And it looks smallish than the other one. And it is the right hand. I didn't read it anywhere. The Bible didn't describe it. This is what the Lord showed me. Clearly, I saw the withered man. And I saw the hand that was with it. And that is the description that I am giving to you. Now listen to me. It wasn't the left hand that was with it. It was the right hand that was with it. Don't forget, why did the Bible use behold? The withered hand. The man with the withered hand. And why is it that it wasn't the left, but it was the right? Now listen to me very carefully. Now, this thing was taking place in the synagogue, in the church, not outside the church. And the reason why the Bible used, behold, the man with the withered hand is because this particular individual was a treasurer clerk of the synagogue. A treasurer clerk. Of the synagogue, which means that he is the one that is in charge of the finances of the church. He controls the finances of the church. He is the, the chief financial officer of the church. And so he is famous and he is well known. That is why the Bible says, Be But the cause of the withered hand was because he was embezzling the funds. He was embezzling the funds. He was misusing the funds without the knowledge of the others. Embezzling the funds. Embezzling the funds misusing the lost money thinking nobody is seeing him no man is seeing him I want to pause there and I want to enlighten you a little bit when the bible says that we are encompassed with cloud of witnesses. Do you understand what that means? You don't understand. And so I will help you. You may be sinning. And there is no human being there physically. But there are cloud of witnesses there. Looking at you. That is why you got to be careful what you do in secret. Thinking that nobody is looking at you, nobody is watching you, nobody is seeing it. It's a lie. There is always, not just present, presence of people around, whether it is in darkness or in light. Don't forget that. That thing scares me a lot. If you have that in mind, you will be afraid to sin because you always have in mind somebody is watching me you see when i was 13 years old growing in the things of god crazy about the things of god but there was nobody to guide me and there was this pastor who just took interest in me because he was flabbergasted that i 
what kind of this young boy that loved God so much and want to know the things of God so much? And so he, he, he took me to, 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 to mentor me and to guide me. And one time he made the statement to me and I cannot forget that statement. I was 13 years old when he made that statement to me. September 17th, I will be 44 years old. And so look at how old the time frame. But I have kept it. This is what he said to me. He said, Grant, whatever you are doing, know that the Lord is looking at you from far distance. Whether it is in the light or darkness, know the Lord is looking at you from far distance. <laughs> when you think that nobody is watching, when you think that nobody is seeing, he is standing somewhere and watching you and taking records. Records. And so, son, be careful. It has never left me. It has been stuck with me and that thing scares me. The man with the weighted hand thinks nobody was seeing him whilst he was embezzling the fans. But he didn't know there were people that were watching and there were people that were taking records of what he was doing. And as a result of the consequences of his sin, his right hand was weak. That is how the church is. We are crippled. Not just paralyzed and crippled. Not just we suffering from palsy. But our right hand is withered. The work of our hand is withered. Our right hand is a symbol of our strength. Our right hand is, 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 is the might of our Excellency. Don't forget when Jacob was, was prophesying over his 12 son, he told Reuben, he said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. The excellency of my strength. You are my right hand, son. But you will be as an unstable as water. And you know the reason why? Sin. Sin made him unstable. 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 The withered hand. Because of sin, the hand was withered. And you know the amazing thing? He didn't even know that because of what he is doing, that is why his hand is withered. And guess what? He is still in the church. Jesus didn't meet him outside the synagogue. Jesus entered the synagogue and saw him in the church. Isn't it amazing? How many paralyzed people we have in the church and with dead hands and they are in the church and yet they don't know the reason why they are paralyzed and they don't know the reason why their right hand is with dead. So we are praying and say, God, give me a job. No job. God, why is my business not excelling? With dead hand. My career is not moving on. With dead hand. Everything that I touch fizzle out with dead hand. Anything I touch turns into dust with dead hand as a result of sin. Please fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Please fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. And walk in his ways. Walk in his righteousness. Walk in his purity. You know, the book of Zechariah says this. He said, because of them that fear God, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. So when the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, he is not arising with healing in his wings because of the sinners and the unrighteous. It's because of the righteous and them that fears him. 
Turn your Bible to the book of Zechariah. Let me, let me, let me, let me break this thing down for you. Zechariah three seven. Zechariah three seven. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways, do you see that? If thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my court, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by me. It's my favorite scripture. My, I pray about, about this particular scripture every single day. God, help me to walk in your ways. Help me to keep your charge. What is the charge? Live by the way. Live by the scriptures. He said, when you do that, I will make you, I will make you, I will make you. Look at what he said. I will make you a judge at my house. At my house. I will make you also keep my court. Do you know what that means? Do you, know, do you know what that means? If you come on Tuesday, you understand what court means. In other words, what God is saying is this. If you walk according to holiness and righteousness and live according to my word, I will let you sit and witness my divine counsel in meeting. My divine counsel in meeting. I told you that the divine counsel, they work with God. They determine how you should die and how you should live. Oh, you don't know. They make suggestions to God. Heaven is not chaotic. There is order and structure. They are different, different counsel. One of the counsel is the divine counsel. They are counsel of prophets. They are counsel of the scribes. When you walk in my ways, when you walk in my righteousness, when you live by my way, when you stay away from sin, I will let you be part of my divine counsel. You will witness it. You will be there. You will witness it. Whilst my divine counsel is in city. And this is my favorite part. He said, I will give you places not a place. Places. I will give you places among them that stands by me. Not one chair. I will leave you many chairs. And so when this is happening, you have a chair reserved for you. You can witness it and be part of it. When that is happening, there is a chair reserved for you. You can sit down and witness it. Now, this doesn't happen by prayer. It happens by you living holy holy living holy living in righteousness living in purity living in the integrity of God's word of God's word listen our weighted hand will never be healed and our paralysis will never be healed until we repent and turn from our wicked ways until we repent and tell from, from our evil ways. Some of us, the sicknesses, the physical ailments that we have is as a result of sin. That is why it will never go away. You have taken all the medicines that you need to take, all the medications. You have seen all the best of the best of the doctors. Because the thing, it is not scientific. It is spiritual. And the root cause is sin. And until you repent and turn from your evil and your wicked ways, that disease and infirmity and affliction is not moving away. It's not moving away. It's not going anywhere. We need the fear of God. The wicked hand was in the church. The treasurer of the church but was living in sin and still in the church. With that hand and still in the church. Let us take off 
our dirty, filthy garments and robes. And let's put on ourselves a clean, white garment. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2, the verse number 5. Revelation 2, the verse number 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. In fact, give it to me in the NIV. Let me, let me, give it to me in the NIV. Remember therefore from whence. The reason why I like the NIV is say height. That's what I wanted you to say. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Can I speak wisdom to you? The one who is already on the ground doesn't need to fall. <laughs> Am I talking to some people here? The one who is already on the ground doesn't need to fall. Because where is he going to fall to? He's already on the ground. You only fall from heights. <laughs> Project the scripture from. Remember the height from which you have fallen. God is talking to the church. He's talking to you and I. Remember where you have fallen from because of sin. Remember. 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 And he said, repent. Somebody shout, repent. Repent, repent simply means turn from your evil ways. Make a you turn. Turn around. From your evil, from your wicked, from your sinful ways. Repent. Repent. Church, repent. Churches in America, the body of Christ, in this nation, repent. Make a detour. Make a U turn from our wicked and our evil ways. Repent. Project it for me. And do the things you did at first. You remember when you were born again? You remember how you loved God? You remember no pastor was telling you pray and you prayed. You remember nobody taught you about holiness. Who taught you about holiness when you got born again? But within you, because the spirit of God was in you and your salvation was sealed by the Holy Ghost. You knew that you have to live a holy life. And you were determined to live a holy life without any distraction. You remember? Yes. Listen, do you remember? Yes. Uh -huh. If you do not repent, I am. If, you, if we don't turn from our evil, our wicked, our sinful ways, there are consequences and ramifications. And those consequences and ramifications is graveyard. 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 <laughs> if you do not repent, I will come to you. Instead of us going to God, he will come to us. If you do not repent, I, the Lord, I will come to you. And if God come to you, it's not funny. Go and check the scriptures. Anytime you read the Bible, the Bible says, and God came down. Trouble. Trouble. <laughs> I will come to you and remove. Remove. Sin removes things out of your life. Precious, valuable things. Sin takes it out of your life. Sin takes it out of your life. You see, I believe beyond every reasonable doubt that there is nobody that is watching me and there is nobody that is under the sound of my voice that doesn't fear fire. Who doesn't fear fire? Everybody fears fire. In fact, you should fear sin than fire. <laughs> because sin will bend you quicker than fire. Sin will cause you agony and pain faster than fire. Sin will make you cry than fire. Sin will afflict you and cause havoc and damages than fire. 
if there is anything you should dread and fear and stay away from is sin. Stay clear from sin. Project the scriptures. He said, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Listen, a lot of believers, their lampstand is removed. Other, other translations like the King James says, they are candlestick. You know what that means? They are illumination. They are understanding. They are revelation. The presence, the glory is out. Out. A lot of believers and a lot of churches, they are candlestick. They are lampstand is remove. That is why the church, there is no power, there is no presence, there is no glory. You know why? God is not there. Why? Because the lampstand is removed. The candlestick is removed. The reason why you are no longer hearing the voice of God. The reason why you are no longer feeling his presence. The reason why you, your, your, your life is so dry is because the lampstand has been removed. And it has been removed as a result of sin, iniquity, worldliness, unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. Listen, this is not the time to play games. This is not the time to joke around. This is not the time to mess around. This is the time to be serious with God. Serious with God. Serious with God. When you talk to God, you must hear God talk back to you. When you pray, you must get results. You must see things happen when you pray. Things are not happening. When you pray, you don't get answers. You don't see manifestations. Doors are not opening because you are not living right. You are not living right. You are not living right. Enough of the pretense in the church. Enough of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Enough of the psychophant believers and nominal believers who don't care about the things of God, about the ways of God, and about the righteousness of God. All they care about is what they can get from God. Enough of it. Enough of it. We need holiness in the church. We need righteousness in the church. We need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. God help us. God deliver us from our sin. Deliver us from our wayward ways. Deliver us from our worldliness. We have pretend for so long. We have taken you for granted for so long. God, wash us. Wash us with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Wash us with his soap that we might be as white as snow and as white as wool. We repent of our evil ways. We repent of our wicked ways. We repent of our sinful ways. Heal us of our wicked hand. Heal us of our paralysis. We want to draw close to you. We want to see your glory. We want to see your power. We want to see your presence. We want to see the outpouring of your spirit. We need a revival. We need an awakening. God, help us. 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 Don't forsake us. Don't reject us. Don't despise us. We are crying unto you. Show us mercy show us mercy show us mercy show us mercy for judgment remember 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 mercy clothe us with righteousness clothe us with purity clothe us oh god clothe us clothe us clothe us clothe us clothe us Clothe us, clothe us. Somebody shout Jesus. Please be seated.
be more Lord I want to be more like you Jesus I want to be more like you oh, I want to be a vessel you work through Sing it, Lord, I want to be more like you. Turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles to Revelation 3, the verse number 4. Hi. Revelation 3, the verse number 4. He said, Yet, yet, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. Jesus do you see that you have a few people few why is this supposed to be few why why is this supposed to be few that are walking in holiness why is this supposed to be few that are walking in righteousness why is this supposed to be few that are serious with their work with God and they have relationship with the almighty God why should it be few why should it be few why should it be few? He said, yet you have a few people inside this who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, not in black. Dressed in white. For they are worthy. They are worthy. For they are worthy. They are worthy to walk with me because they are clothes is white. It's white. They are clothes is not soiled. They are clothes is not unclean. They are clothes is not dirty. Please let us wear white clothes. Let us wear white garments. Let us not soil our garments. We have soiled it enough. We have soiled it enough. We have sold it enough. We have sold it enough. We have sold. You know, sometimes I imagine Jesus and I see how every day he bleeds over and over and over and over again. Because why? Because the bride is not living according to the way she is supposed to live. The bride is not in love with the groom. The bride is not in love with the groom. Because if the bride, which is the church, is in love with the groom, we will not be doing the things that we have been doing. We say one thing, but our heart says another. God have mercy. God have mercy. We dead hand. We dead hand. We dead church. We dead conferences and seminars. With their lives, with their destinies, with their marriages, with their relationships, with their careers, with their businesses. Because our heart is not with Him. Our heart is not with Him. We crucify Him every day, over and over and over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. God have mercy on us. Turn your Bible to the book of Zechariah. Let me show you this scripture and then uh, we will pray. In fact, Malachi, sorry. Malachi chapter 4, the verse number 2. Malachi chapter 4, the verse number 2. Oh, Jesus. But unto you that fear my name I'm repeating that again but unto you that fear my name you see you can know about God but not fear him you can talk about him and not fear him there is a difference there is a difference there is a difference but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth 
and grow up as calves of the storm and grow up no doubt up as calves of the storm when the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings it's not arising because of the sinner he is not arising because of the ungodly and unrighteous. He is arising because of them that fear him, them that walk in his ways, them that walk in his righteousness, them that walk in holiness. And he said, they shall grow up. They shall grow up. The only reason why there is stagnation in your life is because of your relationship with Christ. In fact, you don't even have a relationship at all. You claim to. And most of the time, we claim to to have a relationship. But we don't. We don't have any relationship with him. That is why we are stagnant. That's, that is why we are stuck. There is no growing up. There is no elevation. There is no promotion. There is no lifting at all in our lives. At all. Today, the withered hand can be healed. It can be healed. The withered hand, the withered hand can be healed. The paralysis can be healed. It can be healed. If you will be sincere, if you will be truthful, if you will open up yourself to him, open up yourself to him. Listen, every single day, every single day every single day there are some of us we see God and we ask him God teach me your ways one of the prayers I pray all the time is this God I love you but I want to love you more show me and teach me how to love you more God I want to walk in your ways teach me show me how to walk in your ways you know, Friday I wasn't in church. It's not because I was preaching somewhere. I took myself to a hideout for the week. Just to wait on the Lord and pray. Just me alone. I don't want any distraction, phone calls, anybody coming to talk to me. I don't want any appointment, nothing. I just, I just checked myself into a hotel. With fasting and prayer. What is the prayer? God, teach me your ways. I want to walk in your ways. I don't want to do anything you will look down on me and be disappointed and regret ever even creating me or calling me into the ministry. Help me. Help me. Don't let me be like the others. When you see me, God, I want you to see your glory. I want to be a carrier of your presence. That was my prayer throughout the week with fastings and with prayers. No water, no food. I wasn't ready. You must come to a place where you are hungry for his presence. You are hungry for holiness. You are hungry for righteousness. You are hungry for purity. And you are saying that God, until I become like you, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm not leaving you alone. I am not leaving you alone. We can no longer play Jesus. You can't play God. You can't play God. You can't play. Rise on your feet. Please rise on your feet. Unless you have some peculiar problem that you cannot stand. Which area of your life that is withered? Which area of your life that is withered? Which area of your life that is crippled, that is paralyzed? Which area of your life? Because let me tell you, 
this afternoon we need healing we need the touch of the master we need the touch of God we can no longer live this way we can no longer we can no longer be in the world the Bible says we are in the world but we are not of the world we are representatives of God we are the representative of the most high God. And if we are representing God, we must represent him well. Every ambassador that represents his nation in another country represents the nation very well. Deviation from it, you are fired. It is only us that think that we can do anything, live anyhow. And still maintain our ambassadorship. It doesn't operate like that. The candlestick has been removed. The lampstand, it is removed. You have no idea. You see, some of us, what we, what we have, and when we have our services, do you know what we have? We have the form. Form. They have the form of godliness but they deny the power thereof. What we have is just form. Form. The power is not there. The power is gone. It's not there. Individually, what we have is the form. We carry the name. I'm a Christian. Where do you go to church? Prayer city. Who is your pastor? Pastor Grant. You have the form but the power is not there. We need the power. We need the power. We need the glory. We need the presence. We need it. We need it. We need it. Paul said, let Christ be formed in you. Let Christ be formed in you. In other words, when people see us, they must see Christ in us. Why? Because Christ has been formed in us. In us. Are you ready to pray? Please, I don't need to encourage you to pray. <laughs> you don't need the push to pray. You and I know we need to pray. And this prayer is a prayer of repentance. It's a prayer of turning around. Turning around. Turning around, turning around, turning around. The Bible says, remember from whence thou art fallen. Remember from whence thou art fallen. Remember from whence thou art fallen. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? I want you to feel free. I want you to move around. I want you to be intimate with God as much as possible. I want you to open your heart to him as much as possible open your mind your soul to him talk to him about the flaws talk to him about the weaknesses talk to him about our waywardness and ask him to help you ask him to cleanse you ask him to teach you his ways and his righteousness open your mouth and begin to pray this afternoon healings is going to take place healings of every withered hand healings of every paralysis malia kabahatayas moreshi kaba mataya sukamahantaya Marua kabiria kati kabahaya. Li kamanta yi kabanti kibiria katia. Rokoposa mati kabahanti kibiria katia. Rekabusa matia kabiria kati kabanta. Rekabulia kabi babahaya. Rakabulia sakamba tua kabea. Rekabulia kabi babanti kibiria katia. Rakabulia sakamba tua kabea. Rekabulia kati kabaya. Rakam. Manta kabahaya, roko po saka, matua kabili akabi papa, rakamanti kibili akabi.
Kate, Reka Busaka, Matuaka Biba Banti Kibiliaka Pia, Reka Buliaka Bupapa, Reka Manti Kibiliaka Bopapa, Reka Buliasaka, Matiaka Bopapa, Reka Mahanta Yaka Biliaka Bokapa, Reka Buliasaka, Matiaka Bopapa, Reka Manti Kibiliaka Pia, Reka Bosaka, Mati Kibiliaka, Liaka Bopapa, Raka Manta Kapaha, Liaka Bopapa, Father, heal us, heal us of our deformities, heal us of our spiritual deformities, heal us of our withered hands, heal us, oh God, of our palsy, Matia Kapeha, Reka Bosaka, Matua Kapiria Kataya, Reka Bosaka, Matia Kapilia Kate, Liaka Bosaka, Matia Kapeha, forgive us of our pride, forgive us of our arrogance, forgive us of our blasphemies, forgive us of our lies, forgive us, oh God, of our adultery, fornication, forgive us of our uncleanliness, forgive us of our ungodliness and lies, Father, please forgive us, forgive us of our pretentiousness, forgive us, oh God, Father, of merchandising in your house, Matia Kabo Papa, Roko Polia Katia Forgive us of our gossips and backbiting and rumor mongering. Forgive us, O oh God, of stabbing each other's back. Father, forgive us, O oh God, of our falsehoods, O oh God. Malika Pahata, Roko Posaka, Matika Bahaya, Liaka Popapa, Rakamantuaka Beha, Rekabusaka, Matiki Pilia, Liaka Popapa, Roko Posaka, Liaka Bipapa, Rekamantaka, Liaka. Papa, Rocco Posaka, Matuaka Beha, Reka Biti Kibi, Liaka Popapa, Raka Manti Kibiliakapa, Rocco Posaka, Matuaka Bepapa, Reka Manli Eke Bahanta, Liaka Popapa, Rocco Posaka, Matuaka Beha, Reka Biliaka Dikapa, Liaka Bopapa, Reka Buliaka Popapa, Raka Biliaka Tia, Liaka Bupa Banta Yeha, Rocco Posaka, Matiaka. Bopapa, Raka Buliakapa, Rocco Posaka, Matia Kabiliakata, Liaka Bopapa, Raka Mantaka, Liaka Bopapa, Reka Buliakapia, Reka Buliakata, Father, we acknowledge that we have fallen, we have acknowledge that we have lost our first love. Father, oh God, forgive us. We repent, oh God. Matia Kabulia Saka, Raka Moteke, Lia Kabo Papa, Rocco Bosaka, Matia Kabi Papa, Reka Bulia Kabu Papa, Raka Manti Kibilia Katia, Reka Bulia Saka, Matua Kabi Papanti Kibilia Katia, Reka Bulia Saka, Matua Kabu Papa, Reka Bulia Katia Kabe. Reka manti akabo, roko posaka, mati akabili akati, rakambota ye, li akabu papa, rakamanti kibili akapa, roko posaka, matu akabi papa, rakamanti kibili akapa, rakabota ye, li akabo papa. Father, let our filthy garments be removed. Let our filthy garments be removed. Let our filthy garments be removed. Let our unclean garments be removed. Let our soil garments be removed. Matia kaba, rakabo saka. Matua kabe papa, lia kabo papa. Rakamanti kibili yakapa, rakabo saka. Lia kabo papa, rakabanta yakabi papa. Rakabu si kaba, lia kabo papa. Rakamanti kibili yakabe, rakabu lia saka. Matua kabo papa, rakabanta ya, lia kabo papa. Rakabo saka. Bahaya, Lia Kabo Papa, Rakamanti Kibilia, Rekamota Yeha, Lia Kabu Papa, Rakabulia Kabia. Father, we say we love you, but in our hearts we know we don't love you. But Father, today we repent. Today we repent. Today we repent from our wicked ways, from our evil ways, from our sinful ways, from our deceitful ways. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Matia Kabi Papa, Lia Kabu Papa, let the blood of Jesus cleanse us, let the blood of Jesus wash us, let the blood of Jesus purify us, let the blood of Jesus set us apart, let the blood of Jesus sanctify us, Matia Kabu Papa, Rekabu Saka, 
We want to live for you. 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 We want to walk according to your ways. We want to walk according to your statutes. We want to walk according to your precepts. We want to walk according to your judgment. We want to keep charge of your word. Malia Kabantaya. Rekabulia Sakamba Tiakabaya. Rekabu Sakabaya. Anything that is in us that is not of you. The lustfulness. Father, let it be uprooted. Let it be uprooted. The lies. Let it be uprooted. Father, the anger, the bitterness. Let it be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. Matia Kabi Papa. The wetliness. Let it be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. The ungodliness. Let it be uprooted. The unrighteousness. Let it be uprooted. Anything that is in us that you have not planted. Anything that is in us that you have not rooted. Let it be rooted out. Let it be rooted out. Let it be rooted out. And plant righteousness. And plant purity. And plant holiness. And plant truthfulness. In the name of Jesus. Matia Kabe Papa. Rokopolia Kaba. Rakamanti Kipiria Kate. Rokopolia Saka. Matua Kabo Papa. Rakamilia Kabu Papa. Rakapusi Kimilia Kabia. Matua Kabu Papa. Rakamanti Kibilia Kabi Papa. Rakapulia Kabu Papa. Rekamanta Yakabo. Rekapulia Sakamba Tua Kabe. Rekapulia Kabi Papa. Rakamanti Kibilia Kaba. Rekamanto Kopa. Rekapulia Kabe Papa. Rekamalua Kabe Papa. Rekapelia Suka. Batua Kabe Papa. Rakamanti Kibilia Kabo. Rekapulia Kabo Papa. Rakapanti Kibilia Kabe. Rekamantu Wakaba. Lia Kabo Babalia Kate. Let us be as white as snow. Let us be as white as wool. In the name of Jesus. Matia Kabe Papa. Rekapulia Kaba. Forgive us of our dubious ways. Forgive us of our dubious ways. Forgive us of our deceitful ways. Of our subtle cunning ways. Forgive us of our trickery ways. In the name of Jesus. And have mercy on us. 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 In the name of Jesus. Church. I want everybody to kneel down. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Except you have some peculiar condition that you cannot kneel down. But I want everybody to kneel down. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody, please. Everybody kneel down. Father. As the set man of the house, I carry the sins of this church and I bring it to you. And I say, Father, forgive us as a church. Forgive us because we have taken you for granted. Forgive us because we have walked according to our own ways. Forgive us because we have been wayward. Forgive us because our lampstand has been removed. We have done all kinds of abomination and detestable things unto you. Among us is strife and discord and, and division. Among us is bitterness and anger. Among us is hatred. Among us is gossip and lies and deceit. Among us is sin. Father, I carry all this sin of the church. And I bring it to you. And I say, Father, please forgive us. Forgive us. We repent. Please, God, show mercy. Show mercy. In judgment, show mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy. We are sorry for our evil ways. 
we are sorry for our wicked ways and we are sorry we are sorry we are sorry for our mischievous ways father cleanse us with his soap that we might be clean wash us with the blood of jesus that we might be as white as snow and as white as wool father we promise we will walk in your ways Father, we promise we will abide by your word. Father, we promise we will live for you. We will worship you and serve you in truth and in spirit. Please forgive us. Forgive us and restore our lampstands. Forgive us and restore our candlesticks. Forgive us and restore your presence, your glory in our lives and in this church. God help us. We need your presence. For without your presence, we don't have a church. Without your presence, we are nobody. God, please forgive us and lift us up to where we belong. Father, I thank you. I bless your name for forgiving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Rise on your feet. I want you to walk up to two people and tell them it is well, it is well, it is well. Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.